learners, welcome to our new lesson. For this video, we will be discussing another topic on biological inheritance. But before that, let us have a recap. Do you still remember this man? Yes, you are correct. He is Gregor Mendel. He is the one who formulated the laws of heredity based on his experiment on garden pea plants. He was recognized for his seminal works on genetics. For this, he is considered as the father of genetics. According to him, traits can be dominant or recessive. When we say traits, these are the physical features of an individual, and these are passed from one generation to another generation through genes. Dominant traits are the characteristics that are expressed or the traits that are visible in an organism. On the other hand, recessive traits are characteristics that are hidden or not expressed in an organism. Mendel's experiments shows complete dominance after crossing the pea plant traits. For example, when he cross round and wrinkled peas, the result are round peas, which indicate that round is a dominant allele. Thus, dominant allele was expressed over the recessive allele which is wrinkled peas. The question is, do all organisms follow this Mendelian pattern of inheritance? For today, we will be studying another type of biological inheritance wherein the patterns of phenotypes do not occur with those as expected in Mendelian laws of inheritance. This is called the non-Mendelian patterns of inheritance. And for today's video, we will focus on one of the non-Mendelian patterns of inheritance, which is the incomplete dominance. After Gregor Mendel discovered inheritance law, the term incomplete dominance was proposed by German botanist Karl Korenz. Keeping Mendel's work under consideration, Karl Korenz experimented on four o'clock flowers. He crossbred two true breeding flower traits of four o'clock flowers, the red color as the dominant allele and the white color as a recessive allele. The result shows an intermediate heterozygote with pink color flowers that shows none of the alleles get dominant. This situation in inheritance is known as incomplete dominance. Law of incomplete dominance is a form of inheritance in which one allele for a specific trait is not completely dominant over the other allele. Therefore, there is a blending of characteristics. To understand the mechanism of incomplete dominance, Carl Correns used the Punnett square. The Punnett square is a graphical representation of possible genotypes of an offspring arising from a particular cross or breeding event. It is a tool used to determine the chance of inheriting a specific trait by showing the genetic contribution of each parent. In this case, one plant producing red flowers and another plant producing white flowers are crossed. Now, how does Carl Corrin solve the possible offspring of the white and red 4 o'clock flower using Punnett Square? The first step is to determine the genotypes of the parents. Now, for this case, the genotype of the red 4 o'clock flower is 2 capital R, while the white flower is 2 small r. Notice that we use the letter R to represent the genotype because, as I have mentioned, the red one is the dominant trait. And in genetics, we use the first letter of the dominant trait. We write it in a capital letter to represent the dominant, while small letter to represent the recessive traits. Now for step number two, write down the cross mating. Step three, draw a Punnett square. Step four, split the letters of the genotype for each parent and put them outside the Punnett square. Step number five, determine the possible genotypes of the offspring by filling in the Punnett square. And step number six, summarize the result by writing down the genotypes and phenotypes of the offspring. The Punnett square results in heterozygous offspring with an intermediate trait of pink color. 
showing that no alleles get dominated over the other. The two alleles are not expressed in a way to hide the effect of the other allele, but instead, the phenotype is in between two and the intermediate. Thus, the heterozygote produce flowers with a pink color. For the F2 generation, the heterozygotes or the pink colors are crossed to see the respective phenotypes. The phenotype in the F2 generation results in the same ratio as proposed by Gregor Mendel, which is 1 is to 2 is to 1. The offspring phenotypes were 25% red flowers, 25% white flowers, and 50% pink flowers. This shows that incomplete dominance does not necessarily involve absolute blending because the heterozygote contains both distinct traits or allele, which is the red and the white color, which after crossing the heterozygote in F1 generation, the red and the white color traits still appear. Moreover, in incomplete dominance, the offspring contains both alleles, but the alleles' expressions get intermediate between the two parent traits. As I mentioned earlier, incomplete dominance is partial dominance, meaning the phenotype is in between the genotype dominant and recessive alleles. In our example, the resulting offspring has pink color trait because the dominant allele does not mask the recessive allele, but instead, there is a blending of characteristic resulting in a phenotype different from both alleles. The incomplete dominance carries genetic importance because it explains the fact of the intermediate existence of phenotype from two different alleles. Moreover, Mendels explains the law of dominance that only one allele is dominant over the other, and that allele can be one from both. The dominating allele will reduce the effect of the recessive allele. Whereas in incomplete dominance, the two alleles remain within the produced phenotype, but the offspring possess a different trait. Mendel did not study incomplete dominance because the pea plant does not show any incomplete dominance or intermediate traits. However, Mendel's proposed ratio of 1 is to 2 is to 1 tend to be accurate for incomplete dominance, as seen in the example of 4 o'clock flower, where the F1 generation results in red, pink, and white flowers with genotypic ratio of 1 is to 2 is to 1. Incomplete dominance is widely studied phenomenon in genetics that lead to morphological and physiological variations. The pink flower color trait is an example of incomplete dominance that occurs in nature. However, apart from plants, incomplete dominance also occurs in animals and in humans. In humans, most of the physical characteristics including hair, eye color, height, skin color, sound pitch, and hand sizes shows incomplete dominance. Children born with semi-curly or wavy hair are example of incomplete dominance resulting from the crossing of parents with the alleles of straight and curly. Human height patterns also show incomplete dominance. Parents with the different heights have offspring that shows height in between the parents' height range, rather than similar to any of the parents. Human skin color is another example of incomplete dominance because the genes that produce the melanin for either dark or light skin cannot show dominance over the other. In some animals or birds, the phenomenon of incomplete dominance is also visible. Several examples of incomplete dominance can be seen in chickens, rabbits, dogs, cats, and horses. A chicken found in Spain is an example of incomplete dominance. An offspring produced shows incomplete dominance in its feathers as the parents with white feathered male and black feathered female chicken breed to produce an offspring with blue and pink feathers. This incomplete dominance occurs due to the diluting gene that reduces the intensity of the effect of melanin and lightens the color of the feathers in the offspring. Another example is when a long and short furred rabbit are bred together. The offspring produced have varying lengths of fur or medium. Usually, the breeding of short-furred rex and long-furred angora produce medium length furs. Similarly, the dog tails also shows incomplete dominance. When a long-tailed dog parent is bred with short-tailed dog parent, 
the offspring produced has medium-sized tail. Another example is the Labradoodle. They have wavy hairs that results when the straight and curly-haired parents' dogs are bred. Now that you are able to identify the incomplete dominance examples in different life forms, next time you will go out somewhere, you will see which flowers or other animals shows incomplete dominance. But before that, try to explore yourself first. Look at the characteristic you differ from your parents and find if any of those traits or features shows incomplete dominance such as your hair, your hand size, or height, or any features that you think shows incomplete dominance. So that's it. See you in our next lesson. And if you are new to my channel, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification so that you will be notified for more videos like this.